We've seen pictures of it online already, and yes, we've read each and every one of your angry Instagram comments about this grill. But finally, we're here with the 2021 BMW M3 competition in the metal. Now, obviously, the design is the biggest talking point, but behind that face is a bona fide performance car with 503 horsepower. So while your haters might be laughing now, they definitely won't be when you fly by them on the highway. Before we talk about performance, we do have to address the elephant or elephants in the room, these two massive kidney grills. These are the focal point of the design and definitely a big departure from what we've seen on previous M3 models. But photos don't do it justice. These are actually pretty cool in person. You get these nice horizontal slats that run up and down the length and the M3 badge here in the corner. Honestly, it's a sharp looking vehicle. I posted a picture on Twitter the other day when I first got this car and a lot of you commented that the blue definitely helps make the face feel less in your face compared to what you get on the Sao Paulo yellow or the Isle of Man green. And that's true, it's definitely easier to digest when you look at it head on. And it comes with a contrasting carbon fiber roof in the competition model. If you look at some other M cars, you'll notice that the wheel designs are pretty crazy and we like that. That carries over here to the M3 competition. It gets staggered 19 inch front and 20 inch back wheels that are no cost options among a few other no cost wheel options. They really add some drama to this already dramatic design. The back end of the M3 is way more subtle than what you get up front. The taillights, for example, are exactly the same as on the traditional 3 Series, although they are darkened here as part of the shadow line treatments, a $300 option that also smokes out the headlights. There's a subtle spoiler on the trunk lid, some additional detailing down lower on the diffuser, and quad exhaust tips that actually look really cool. Considering how busy the front end of this car is, we're glad BMW kept it simple in the rear. I have sort of a love-hate relationship with the current generation of BMW's M cars. The M2 and the M5, for example, are two really great vehicles that I would spend my own money on. As for the X4M, that's not really my cup of tea. For the M3 competition, it's closer to the M2 and the M5, but it's not as good. And I'll explain what I mean. My favorite part of this car is the engine. It's a phenomenal twin turbocharged 3 liter inline six. It is the same unit you get on the X4M, but they've retuned it thoroughly here to produce 503 horsepower, which is 60 more than what you got on the previous M3. And this car will hit 60 in just 3.8 seconds when you gun it. Unlike the V8, I think I actually prefer the sound of the six cylinder here in the M3. Now, we're not sure how much of that is amplified through the speakers because we know BMW loves to do that. But if you put it in sport mode and drop a gear or two, That's a great sound. This is a great sounding motor in general. Gone are the days of the DCT. This new M3 actually gets an eight speed automatic. Although we don't really miss the dual clutch because this transmission is just as good. Obviously you can keep it in automatic mode and cruise or you can use the paddle shifters. But even when you're in automatic mode, it'll rev all the way up to redline and hang the revs in sport mode. Problem is when you do get up to redline and let off the gas, it'll hang there for a little bit too long, longer than we like. Unlike the larger M5, BMW smartly decided to keep this model rear wheel drive standard. Now we know an all wheel drive version is coming down the line, but for now we're really liking power at the rear wheels. While the M3 definitely feels nimble and agile, the steering leaves a little something to be desired. It's almost too twitchy, even in sport mode, which could be good when you're on the track or carving up a canyon, but here it makes the car almost feel too manic. It's kind of all over the road. Another complaint that I have that I've felt in some other M cars is that the suspension can feel a little crashy at times, especially in sport mode. When you really put it in a corner, it almost feels like it's skipping over the pavement rather than just smoothly attacking it. But those are minor complaints to the overall picture. The M3 competition is obscenely fast, agile when you want it to be, and really just fun as hell overall. If you've been in pretty much any other modern BMW, all of this should look familiar. There's a 10.3 inch touchscreen here, 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster here, and you get the latest version of iDrive, which means there's rotary dial and touch functionality. This car also has the optional $2,500 Merino leather package, which covers the seats, dash, and door panels, and it's a really nice finish. If you do want to go a little bit sportier, you can get the performance carbon fiber buckets, but these are nice and comfy. And because this is an M car, you get even more goodies to play with. You can customize everything from the steering to the suspension, and for the first time on any M car, the grippiness of the brakes. Of course, you can configure all of it on these red M1 and M2 buttons on the steering wheel, however you want. But the coolest thing in the new M3 is the M drift analyze function. 
It's essentially a drift mode that gives you points for how well you're drifting, and even things like how intense the traction control is play into your final score, though BMW says this is only for use on the track. Don't try it on the road. We talked about performance, looks, we went over the interior. Oh, there is one thing I did forget. This car costs $93,000 as tested. Yeah, I mean, I know cars are getting more expensive these days, but honestly, what the f BMW? I thought the M3 used to be a performance value. Granted, the options is what kills it. The carbon ceramic brakes alone are $8,000. The executive package, which adds Remote start, heated steering wheel, and a power tailgate is $3,000. And there's an M driver's package, which adds another $2,500. And that only gives you a top speed of 180 miles per hour and one day of BMW driving school. You can get this car in its base form for $72,000, which feels like the right price, considering the C63 and the Audi RS5 cost about the same. This car definitely isn't perfect, especially with that expensive price tag. But the new M3 competition is a great next chapter in the performance car's long history.